Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25. The book of Matthew chapter 25. Let's read verse 23, 24 onwards actually. Matthew chapter 25 verse 24 onwards. It says, And he also who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. I was afraid and I went away and hid your talent in the earth. Behold, you have your own. But his Lord answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I didn't sow and gather where I did not scatter. You ought therefore to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received back my own with interest. Take away therefore the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who has not even that which he has will be taken away. So we know that this, this, this is a parable where the Lord, the, the owner, he gives talents, he gives money uh, to three of his servants and then he goes, he goes on a journey and after many days he comes back and then he is taking account. Alright? He is taking account and uh, the first one comes to him and says, Lord, you gave me five, here is it, I have made 10 out of the 5 that you gave me. The same way, the, the guy who had 2, he comes to him and says, You gave me 2, I have multiplied that. Now here there is 4. Right? And to both of them, they are, they are, their owner looks at them and says, Well done, good and faithful servants. Amen? But then comes the third guy. You know? And let me tell you, in the story... He is the minority, but the character of the third guy is the majority in church today. Okay? We'll find a lot of these people who are like the third guy in church today, or rather in any field today. Because when the owner came and took accounts, he said, I know you are a strict person. I know you are a very uh, difficult taskmaster. All right? You are very strict with the money that you've given me. I knew you would take very stringent uh, accounts. I was scared, he said. He said, I did not do anything with the money you gave me because I was scared that I would run into losses. Okay? So what did I do? I took it and I buried it in the ground. All right? He took the talent, he took the resource, he took the money, he took the gift that his Lord had given him and he put it in the ground. And he said, here it is, what you gave me, I am giving back to you. And that's when the owner starts speaking to him. He says, you knew I was a difficult taskmaster and you still buried what I gave you. He said, what did he say? He said, you unfaithful and slothful servant. Okay? What did he say? You unfaithful and you slothful. In other words, he's saying, you unfaithful and you lazy servant. Alright? Now, see, the, the servant made an excuse. He's saying, I was afraid. But the owner is saying, no, 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 you did not do this because of fear. You did not do this just because you were lazy. Okay? So what, what did the owner say? He said, take what is his and give it to the guy who has 10. Now, I don't want to go there. But what I'm trying to tell you is, a lot of people in the Christian world today, we are blessed by talents and gifts and anointings that the Lord has given us. And not just in the kingdom, but generally we are so talented that our talents are enough for us to be successful in the world as well. 
okay but a lot of people are not able to succeed just because not because of fear not because of lack of talent not because of lack of opportunity but just because we are lazy see i know we are in church and we need to talk about anointing and we need to talk about gifts and prophecy and all those things but let me tell you a lot of our spiritual success is dependent on the practical steps that we take towards them yeah, yeah, yeah. amen a lot of our spiritual success a lot of success in general and a, and the bible has a lot to talk about people who are lazy laziness is not what god made us for in fact when god made adam he first made the garden he put adam in the garden and then he says now adam you take care of this garden see before god gave him a spiritual call he said you take care of this place, this thing first before adam could bring his you know uh, god could bring adam's eve to him he said let me see how faithful he is in the work that i am giving him before i give a bigger responsibility to him to all the guys sitting in this room who some day want to get married you need to have a job you need to have a house see all of you guys went silent you need to have a job you need to you you you, you need to make money because that's responsibility none of us can say god i ha- did not have opportunity none of us can say god you know uh, uh, if only i was born in such and such family because i have seen people who've come out of the most difficult circumstances but they've still made through just because they were determined to put in the hard work hey man you know and i'm i i am saying this because through through the last week i have been seeing how easy it is for people to say i cannot do this but there are some people who are you know uh, miles ahead of somebody even though they are less talented less qualified just because they were not lazy and they were ready to put in an extra effort yeah. amen you guys are quiet which is good i hope you're thinking all right about, you know the bible has a lot to talk about lazy people You know the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 the Lord is talking to a man who is lazy and he's saying go to the end you sluggard consider her ways and be wise You read that Can you imagine how how strong those words are He's saying, "Look at the ant." He's talking to man, and he's giving example of an ant. Ants that we don't care about till the time they don't bite you. Ants, when you see them working for fun's sake, you'll just break the line. but what we don't realize is in 5 minutes of you breaking the line the line is back again and they start working again they don't sit crying about hey what did i do to you i didn't offend you i am i am minding my business why did you do this god look at this no they get back to work and god is saying you lazy person you slugger learn from the ant if you learn from the ant it says the word says you will become wise wow that means i don't need to go on youtube download the best sermon i 
Because we think if I listen to a good sermon, <clears throat> I will become wise. But God is saying, listen, I have a hidden wisdom in things that you consider inconsequential if you could only give attention to detail. He's saying, consider the ants. They're not lazy. You, see, we don't see ants during rainy season, do we? We'll see them all in summer. You know why? Because they are working in the summer. They are preparing for food. They store food that will last them for the whole rainy season. We don't see ants for good three months. Doesn't mean they, you know, just evaporate from the face of the earth. They are there. But they are then hiding in the comfort of their storeroom that they put in hard work to build. How many of us struggle when we hit a financial crisis? Come on. I'll give you an example. Your salary comes on the first or the second or the third or whatever. The first seven to ten days, you guys are kings. Yes. In your first ten to twelve days, there will be shopping, there will be eating out. But come 21st, 22nd, you will go to mom. <laughs> you know why? Because we did not consider the ants. Because when they had in abundance, you know what they did? They put in effort and saved. They were not lazy about it. We time man. Hey man. Why? Because we are lazy people. I'll tell you. Bible has given us some signs to understand if we are lazy people. Is that okay? I want to tell you this. Laziness is a lifestyle for some but a temptation for everybody. Laziness is a lifestyle for some but it's a temptation for everybody. Because everybody has the option of saying I will not go to work today. Why? I don't feel like how many of you have taken off just because you did not feel like? Come on. Few signs that show that a person is lazy. Number one, a lazy person hates work. <laughs> huh? A lazy person hates work. I'm not saying this, the word of God says, okay? Proverbs. It says, I think this is Proverbs 25. The sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. A sluggard's craving will be the death to him because his hands refuse to work. Now, please understand, I'm not saying this to condemn anybody of you, any one of you. But I want us as a church and as individuals judge ourselves See, because we are so focused on anointing, we are so focused on prophecy, we are so focused on this meeting and that conference and, and, and this evangelist coming and laying hands on me and this fellow prophesying on me, that we forget that there can be a thousand prophecies over our lives, but if we don't work towards it, we will never see it happening. 
That is why the Bible says faith without works is dead. And we apply it only when it comes to prayer. Yeah. But faith is alive only when we work towards the subject for which we have that faith for. Amen. If, if, if I say one day I will be a very successful businessman. I have so many good ideas. Can I tell you, good ideas don't make good businessmen. Good ideas executed make good businessmen. Amen. I might have a thousand good ideas. But if I don't do anything about it, I will die with them and the ideas, nobody will know them. That's why somebody said, the graveyard is the most precious place in the world because thousands of talented people died with their talent and their ideas and are buried right here. A lazy person hates work. I don't know if you know somebody like that. If you know somebody, say yes. Right. Number two. A lazy person... Okay, get ready. I, I like this. <laughs> he loves to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you know some people like that. Proverbs 26 verse 14 says... As a door turns on, it, on its hinges, so is a lazy man. So is a sluggard. You know why? Because he turns like that on his bed. <laughs> I know the Bible also says that the Lord blesses his, his, his righteous with good sleep, but anything in excess not good. Amen. How many of us, you know, and it's, it's, some rest is needed. You know, Bible talks about rest. Our bodies need rest. But rest, kya kar raha hai? Rest. Kyo? Rest kar kar ke thak gaya. You're resting because you rested so much that you're tired of rest. <laughs> Number three. A lazy man gives excuses. The sluggard says there is a lion in the road. A fierce lion roaming the streets. You know where this is? I'm not saying this. The Bible is saying it. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13. You know, some people make excuses that don't even make sense. You know that the person knows that you are just making excuses, but you will still go ahead and make them. Amen. You know, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, why are you late for work? Go. Tire puncher ho gaya. Okay. First day tire puncher ho gaya. And then the second day, why are you late for work? Go. BST ka tire puncher ho gaya. Third day, why are you late for work? Oh, local train ka tire puncher ho gaya. <laughs> See, we think we are giving excuses, but what we are actually doing is we are painting a sorry picture of who we are. And then we go, go out and say, praise the Lord, I am a Christian, I love Jesus. And they are saying, if, if that's what it is, Jesus was a very hard working man. 
You know, if you're saying that we reflect the character of Jesus, then, then we should reflect the character of Jesus where he worked hard. Because everybody said, hey, isn't this the carpenter? I mean, they saw him working. Amen. Before being called the, the prophet, before being called the guy who raises people from the dead, before being called the guy who walks on water and everything, they called him a carpenter. Why? Because they saw him working. A lazy man and a woman. By only man. Makes excuses. Number four. A lazy man wastes time and energy. Again, I'm not saying this. Proverbs 18 verse 9. All of a sudden you will be saying, Hey, I read Proverbs, never focused on these things before. Kabhi ye sab dekha hai nere? Tere Bible mein hai? Mera kuch to printing mistake hai. Oh, textbook mein hota hai. Hey, mera... He who is a slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great waster. I'll tell you. You want to know whether a person is lazy or not? Look at people with whom he spends time. Because the people a lazy man spends time with are not hardworking people. They are also just like him. <laughs> Second Thessalonians, read that, sorry. Three six. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. Ah. You keep away from anybody who is wasting his time, is what the word of God is saying. Why am I saying this to you guys? I'll tell you something. Every company you go and apply work, job applications you give to, they will pay you against the single commodity that each and every one of you have and that is time. They pay you because of whoever you are, you said, I will spend eight hours of my day here and I will do work for you. Amen. Now, if you sit in office and you have a friend who is a great waster of time, will the employer keep you for long? He'll say, thank you so much for your services, which you did not render. Please leave. Amen. Thank God. God doesn't kick us out. See, actually God is the only employer who will kick us out and allow us to keep our position. He'll remove you from job and he'll not even tell you. That's what happened with Saul. He sat on the throne for ages. But he was anointed to be the king only two years. And for the rest of the time, he sat on the throne thinking, I am the king. But in God's eyes, he had already chosen David. You know why? Because David was working hard every day. Taking care of sheep is not a simple thing. I mean, in the world, the job doesn't have high, uh, you know, respect or whatever. But it's not a simple thing. It's a difficult work to be a shepherd. You've got to take account of all the 100, 200, whatever sheep you have. You've got to ensure that there are no bugs on them. You've got to ensure that all of them are fed. You've got to ensure that none of them are having any disease. They are healthy. You've got to, uh, um, after you know, some time when there is enough, uh, 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 what is, what, 
they got the wool on them you've got to remove that wool it's hard work and david was doing it and how do i know david was doing it because i know the bible says he was so diligent towards the work that his father gave him that he even went ahead and fought with a lion and fought with a bear yeah. to protect his responsibility he was diligent towards the work that god had given him see a lot of us we don't succeed at work because we are only working but there is no diligence in that work you understand the term diligence diligence is basically being true to it how many of us have gone to work sat on our desk and baithte hi humne ghadi dekha yaar 6 kab bajenge how many of us 6 months into our job we start cursing the boss we start saying are yaar ka aake phas gaya main जबकि जब वो जॉब लगा था तुमने आके टेस्ट में नहीं दिया था सी नो बडी एवर टोल्ड यू इट विल बी इजी बट एज सून एज इट स्टार्ट बिकमिंग डिफिकल्ट वी से आई डोंट लाइक दिस जॉब आई डोंट नो यू नो सम बॉसेस आर डिफिकल्ट आई अंडरस्टैंड बट दैट्स देयर जॉब दे आर पेड टू डू दैट when you become a boss you will do the exact same thing because if you don't do that your boss will kick you out amen, amen. so keep a check who do you hang out with are you hanging out with people you know some people they just come to waste your time and you call them friends distance yourself because you you have only one commodity with you and that is time and if we keep wasting time it's not going to be given back to us do you know that time spent is gone forever you will never be 21 again in your life or 22 or 23 or 35 today is the only day you have we cannot be wasting our time sorry i'm taking so much time but another another sign somebody is a lazy person he believes he is wise but he is a fool Have you met some people like that who think they know everything? Actually, they don't know nothing. Twenty six sixteen Proverbs twenty six sixteen says, "The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer discreetly. He thinks he is smarter than other people." You know, some people they'll just come and talk nonsense, absolute nonsense. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Some people they'll just come and keep talking and talking and talking about. They have answers to everything. They have answers to whether man landed or moon or the moon landed on man. <laughs> everything. They know everything. They're not making sense to end you. Like, ah, yar, kabi kono kam karega tu. if they would have put in half the effort in understanding the subject they would have not made fools of themselves and i want to tell you let's not be those people because we become that person sometimes you know why people don't like to talk to christians because we have an opinion about everything it's good to have an opinion you don't have to share it everywhere amen Let's not waste our time doing this. These are the few signs. There are many more, but few signs that a person is lazy. Now, laziness, just as faithfulness, hard work has good results, laziness has its consequences. 
I hope we're learning something. Are we? Yeah. A lazy person, number one, will always be a slave. Or in other words, he'll always be under debt. Four. It says, diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. Diligent hands will rule. It doesn't say qualified hands. It doesn't say talented hands. It says diligent hands. Hands that are willing to work. Hands that are willing to, to, you know, sweat. Hands that are willing to say, I will put in the extra effort. Are you understanding? Yes? When nobody wants to do a job, will you go ahead and do it? Even if you are not getting any credit for it. See, these days, people don't do something because I am not getting credited for this. I will not do it. You know, uh, President Harry S. Truman in America, he said, it's amazing what we can achieve if we don't care who gets the credit. It's amazing what we can achieve. If we don't care about who gets the credit. I'm telling you, these are the basic principles that corporates are using today. And they are being successful. And we, people of God, who have received these from God, are not prospering. You know why? Because we believe answer to everything is prayer. Please, don't take me wrong. Prayer is important. But after praying, we've got to work as well. Amen. If we only keep praying, 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 praying and don't do anything about it, the job will not search for you and come to your house. Amen. If I only keep praying, 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 praying and praying and I don't go evangelize, the world outside will not know that there is a God in heaven who loves them. Hallelujah. Laziness has very scary consequences. I don't want to be a slave for the rest of my life. It says diligent, diligent hands will roll. But laziness will always result in bonded slavery. Why? Because a lazy man will always depend upon somebody else. As a church, we've not to become that person. Why? Because we've been called to, a bless to become a blessing for somebody else. Not be dependent on somebody else. I have been called to give, not to receive. Because Bible says it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, there is a time in each and every one of our lives where we need something and God gives us and we receive it from somebody, through somebody. God allows those things to come into our life. But then God says, listen, now that you have received, I want you to become the giver also. And a lazy man will say, God, you are so good. I will pray and you will give. Amen. A lazy man's future is always bleak. Always bleak. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says, A lazy man does not plow his field in his season, and at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. See, laziness might not affect you today, because today you're like, I'm chilled out. 
but it will always affect the future always just like the ants they walk through the summer so they can be safe and enjoy through the whole of rainy season they are working towards the future we all want our futures to be bright isn't it yes no and god says my plans for you i know them they are plans to what prosper you not to harm you but prosper you to give you a hope and future but have we have we focused on it it says i know the plans i have for you and for you and me to have the prosperity and the bright future that god has planned for you and me those plans will have to be executed i mean i know god executed the plan brilliantly 2000 years ago when jesus died on the cross that was his end of the bargain and there is our end of the bargain that we have to keep because god will never ever bless a lazy man do you know that the bible says if you don't work don't eat I mean that's how strict and straight God is about this he is saying if you do not work listen if you do not work do not eat and we think it's okay see i am not saying you worked and you failed at it that is still okay only when you work you fail people who don't do anything they never fail at anything Amen. I mean, I I know God has a plan for us. I know God has a plan for this church. I know God has a plan for each and every one of you. Some of them for, for some of you it is ministry, some of you it is your work, some of you it is it is your uh, talent, some of you it might be business, but anything and everything if it has to succeed, work has to be put in. Are you understanding church? we can dream a thousand dreams but they will never ever come to pass if we don't work towards them i want to ask you a question when was the last time you said i have to improve the skill god has given me we all have talents right some people don't have talents but they succeed you know why they say i am not naturally talented but i will put in work yeah. yes some people have crazy amount of talent but they don't do anything about it a lazy man's future is always bleak a lazy man will remain poor Proverbs 13 verse 4 says the soul of the lazy man desires and has nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich is another verse Proverbs chapter 6 verses 9 and 9 to 11 somebody read that how long will you sleep How long will you lie in your bed? A little more sleep, a little more slumber, a little more folding of hands and poverty will come as a thief. Or we think we're just resting, but what we are allowing the enemy to do is come and rob our destiny away from us, rob our future away from us, uh, rob the prosperity that God wants to give us, rob the businesses, rob the Can you imagine what consequences this has? We cannot 
cannot remain in this place. Church, listen. If this church has to grow, you know who has to bring people? Not me. You. Because disciples give birth to disciples. Pastors will give birth to pastors. Lazy people will give birth to lazy people. Point number four. A lazy person will lose his stewardship. And we began with that in Matthew chapter 25 verse 11. The, the owner came, the master came and said, you unfaithful, you lazy servant, I gave you one thing to handle and you didn't do it correctly. And now you're making excuses saying you were afraid? If you were afraid, you would have not buried it in the ground. You would have at least taken it to the bank. You don't work. Let my money work for me. Hey man. And then what did he do? He took it from him and gave it to the person who had it. Right? That means he just did not take the money. He did not take the talent. He took his stewardship away. He was no longer the steward of that master. He no longer had the job. All of us We've got to be good stewards of what God has given us. Amen? And what God has given you, God has given you a family. God has given you a job. God has given you a talent. God has given you a gift. God has given you an anointing. God has given you a call. God has placed a ministry inside of you. Until the time I am not a good steward of God, God has given me, it will never matter. I'll tell you what good stewardship is. Good stewardship is multiplication. Good stewardship is multiplication. If where I am, I was in the same place 10 years ago, I am not a good steward. If my talent has become stagnant and I have not worked towards improving it, what is the point in having talent? Amen. And the master said, take it from him. Give it to somebody who has it. I mean, sounds like God, he already has 10. Why are you giving him? Because he has 10. Because he valued the five that he had. But God, I, I, I did not do it because I only had one. Listen, I gave you one because I knew you had the capacity to take care of the one. And I gave him five because he had the capacity to take care of the five. So I was not being fair. I was being just. God is not fair. He is just. And that's why some of us have one. Some of us have three. Some of us have ten. Now what happens after we receive it? What we do with it tells us our character. Amen. Do you know why people don't want to business, do business with Christians? Because we say something and we do something else. If two Christians are doing business, one fellow has given the word, he will never deliver on that word. Brother, it's... No! Just because you are Christian doesn't mean the person has to understand business. Business is business, faith is faith. 
Let your yes be a yes, your no be a no. Amen? If you say, I am going to deliver this on so and so day, you better do. Now, you fail at doing it, fail at it, trying to do it, not because you didn't do anything about it. We're learning something, church. I don't want us to lose our stewardship. Because if I lose my stewardship, what identity do I have? What will I call myself? Um, how many of you like to say, I'm talking to guys, also, just girls also, everybody. How many of you like to tell everybody you lost your job? Do you like to tell? <laughs> Nobody. Why? Because they'll ask you, cure eh? If you have a good reason, but if you don't, you will never say, I was lazy, I didn't do my work. Company is not there. Boss is not there. Boss is not there. Amen. There is no room for laziness in a Christian's life. There shouldn't be. You know, the Bible says we were not saved by works. We were saved by grace, right? But after that, everything is work. We were saved by grace. But once salvation happened, everything else we have to work towards. We cannot be sitting and saying everything will come to me. No, it does not. In fact, the word of God says, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship created in Him for good works that He prepared for us even before the foundations of the earth. Created Him in Him for what? For what? Created in Him to laze around? No. Created in Him to work. Good work. Hallelujah. If God has made us to work, I mean, it's, it's a truth that God made us that we could worship, but it is also true that God made us so that we could work. Amen. We are His craftsmanship we, ha we are his masterpiece we are the thing that God made diligently he put effort into it can you imagine when God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made that means he did not just abruptly pack you and send you down and that is why your one hand is as long as the other hand he put time and effort and thought into creating you. And that is why you look the way you are and you look good the way you are. God works. Our God is a God who doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He is always watching over. And if we say we want to become like Jesus, one of his characteristics was he was a hard worker. He was honest.
Somebody read James chapter 2 verse 18. 18 to 18 and verse 26. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. He's saying, I will show you my faith not in words but in my work. He's saying, show me your faith. I don't know how you plan to do that, but I plan to show you the kind of faith I have in the work that I am doing. I'll give you an example if it's difficult to understand. Everybody said, Noah, what are you doing? He said, I trust in God. I know. I trust, you trust in God. But what are you doing? I am building an ark. What is an ark? I don't know. But God asked me to build an ark. Why? Because God said there is going to be rain. What is rain? I don't know. But God said make this ark. What? You are building something that you don't know what it is for something that nobody has seen because of a God that nobody knows exists but alone you. He says, but I trust and I have faith in my God. And what do you have to show for it, Noah? I have an ark. Amen. I believe I'm going to be an Olympic medal winner someday. What do you have to show for it? I am working hard. Amen. You cannot be playing gully cricket all your life and expect to play for India someday. You've got to put in hard work. See the Bible says Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. My what in the Lord? My talent? My gifting? My calling? My anointing? My labor. When you keep doing things even when nobody is appreciating you. When you keep doing it because you know that's what you're supposed to do. When you do things when your boss is not watching you doing it. Some people work out only when, when boss is around. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So many scriptures in the Bible talk about how hard work God recognizes it. It says, until the Lord builds the house, they that build, build it in vain. That means there is some kind of work happening. Do you know that first time God came and brought confusion in the minds of people is when they were working hard to build a tower that will go up to heaven? The only reason God confused them because their intention of heart was wrong towards it. He says, these guys have put their mind to it. If I let them do this, they will build it. If we put our mind to it, and we are dedicated towards it, the Bible says, then, when there was no technology, when there were no machines, when there were no big cranes, when there was no jumbo-sized buildings, they were saying, we will build a tower that will reach the heavens. And God recognized what they said and said, these guys will. Because they were not lazy. How do I know they were, they were not lazy? Because they said, let us build bricks. There were no bricks then. They said, we will make bricks. We will burn them. We will ensure that they are strong. That is hard work. And today, as Christians, we think if we pray, God will do everything. No, 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 no. God will not do anything. 
because the bible says now this earth is in your control not in god's control all authority heaven and earth given to me i give it to we like to quote it no but there is a responsibility attached to it when he said adam be fruitful multiply he said another thing have dominion that means this earth i have given in your hands what you do of it will matter hallelujah amen what made naaman to go and listen to a slave girl there is a prophet go he you know you know i, I, I you know it's not written there but i believe she was a hard working girl nobody listens to a lazy man however good his idea is come on your idea might be brilliant but they discard your idea because they know the person is lazy uska baat kya sunne ka but church i want to encourage each one of us today we've got to leave aside our slothiness there is work to be done if we don't do it today not just we the coming generation will be poor a righteous man leaves behind a a inheritance to leave an inheritance you have to work hallelujah church is not just blessings and anointing church is work ministry is a lot of work i've heard people are ye kuch nahi karta isko pastor bana dega that's why our seminaries and bible colleges are filled with people who come out and do nothing i have witnessed it i have seen it because parents think he is any which is good for nothing let's send him to bible college really you want to give substandard offering to god when god said bring me an offering bring me a sacrifice which doesn't have uh, uh, any wrinkle any blemish any spot on it he said bring me a perfect perfect sacrifice and we say we can give half hearted worship to him the bible says work when you're working for your boss don't think that you are working for your boss think that you are working for god so if i am working for god will i reach work late it's a different story people come to church late which shouldn't be the case anywhere but church hai chalta hai god gracious hai can i tell you we were created to do some amazing work that is our destiny we were created to do work that's what the bible says we are god's craftsmanship craftsmanship we are not just something we are a product of god's amazing 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 ability of making something out of zero we are a product of his talent amen that's why people pay so much for an mf hussein payment painting even though they don't understand what is on it why because somebody very talented painted it amen they they pay money to bring these amazing paintings 
Why? Because the creator was somebody very famous. Now you and I are God's masterpiece. And let me tell you, if I don't do what I am supposed to do, I am degrading the value of not just me, but the one who made me. Hallelujah. So church, I want to tell you, I don't care if there is no diligent work around you. I don't care if there is no no uh, 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 good examples of hard work. Let us become those examples. Yes. Amen. Yes. This story. And then we will pray. I had this in my English textbook when I was a kid in school. It was about some king who was in battle, who was at war. And he lost his war. His soldiers died. And he went and he hid inside a cave. The Bible says when he sat inside the cave through the night and he was sulking about the fact that he lost the war and he was depressed because now nobody will talk about how successful or how mighty this king is. And he was very sad. He was very depressed. He was frustrated. He, he felt dejected. He felt that he was a loser. But, but as he sat in the cave, he saw a small spider weaving a web you seen? And so many times as the spider was trying to weave that web, it fell. But it went back again. And after a full night of work, the web was not even complete. And, and, and the spider kept doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Why? Just so that when the web is done and the spider goes and sits in it, it's easy for the spider to catch hold of food. And the king said, if this spider, so inconsequential, is not giving up, how can I? We cannot give up. You might have lost but we cannot give up. Or maybe as you are listening to these words today, you might be thinking, oh, I am so lazy, I am this, I am that, I did not do this. I have not said any of this today to condemn any one of you because God knows I have been lazy. I have been lazy myself. At times I have, I have just done nothing. So the word of God is for all of us to reflect and say, Hey, I see this in my life. This is good. Let me improve this. And I see this in my life. This is not good. Let me eliminate it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And as young people, it is good that we learn it now. We've got to learn hard work. We've got to learn diligence. We've got to strive to be excellent. That's what the word of God says. Be excellent in what is good. Romans chapter 16. Amen. We serve a God of excellence. We don't serve a lazy God. Amen. Going on the cross was not easy. It was difficult work. Jesus had to carry his cross. It was difficult. Hallelujah. Can we strive to be excellent? If you are a painter, be an excellent painter. If you are a writer, be an excellent writer. If you are a manager, be an excellent manager. Don't let laziness that is a temptation come and pull you down. The Bible says he has given us the authority and power to resist the devil. Amen. Laziness is nothing else but devil's weapon. 
and the bible says resist the devil he will flee from you so if you are struggling with it i you know i don't want you to come and tell me i want you to tell god today say god today till today whatever happened happened but right this moment onwards i want to see a change i will bring that change there will be excellence in my life there will be no sign of laziness i will put in hard work if that means i will make 10 mistakes i will make mistakes but i will learn from them amen, amen. 